Okay, wonderful. Well, welcome everyone to Scientific Photonics. We are hosting this uh, free webinar and uh, brief training of the laser safety software. And uh, Jim's uh, must be getting a cup of coffee. Yes, I, I probably caught him flat on his feet there. <laughs> Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Sorry about the little cough there. Thanks for uh, joining us, uh, and um, we're going to be doing a brief training on the LaserSafe PC. As we can see, we're on uh, the current homepage for Scientific Photonics, and we'll go ahead and minimize that and bring up the uh, LaserSafe PC software, which is already running. Yeah, yeah, the magic of technology. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this is uh, being done with uh, the newest version, version 5.2, which has been a fairly large update, um, effective May of 2017 and it includes uh, all the global standards, the European standards, the American standards, and uh, the old, I guess out of date, CDRH standards, which some people still need to know. So that's one thing that makes your software unique, isn't that right? Absolutely. The, um, uh, being a laser safety officer, I need to be in a situation where I can assess hazards quite quickly. Uh, experience is one thing, but when you're dealing with certain uh, specifics, you need to be able to analyze the situation very quickly. So I, I initially wrote the software to help me evaluate this and do a set of calculations very, very quickly, um, particularly when you haven't got a lot of time to do things. And eventually it evolved into the product that it is today. That's uh, 25 years in the making and, and going better than ever, Hopefully. Huh? The embryo started 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, your software has uh, quite notably been uh, recognized as uh, helping to correct some of the standards out there because your software is so good it actually discovered errors in, in actual standards. Isn't that right? Uh, that it did uh, a few years back. The, I'm not going to go into the details, but we did, uh, using it, we did discover a couple of errors in some of the standards and they had to change. But that's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's our little past history. <laughs> so don't have to uh, brag too much about that one. Well, I think it's a big deal. I mean, if somebody's trying to evaluate several different um, softwares to use, because there are several others out there, kind of, I don't, I don't want to necessarily say copied, but they're out there. And, uh, but I don't know if they can brag that they've uh, actually. And I think we're having a little bit of a connection problem. <coughs> so we're having some connection problems uh, off and on. There might be small lags, so don't let that uh, yeah, bother you. Not a yeah, uh, anyway, I, I, I don't know if you heard my question. Did you hear I my question? didn't catch that. I was, uh, the, the part I did catch uh, was about uh, there being other software around. This there is, of course. Yes, um, uh, other software, I, I, but I don't think that they um, easily allow you to access all the standards like yours does. To my knowledge, uh, we are quite unique in the sense that we do cover all the, uh, both the standards, uh, EN60825 and Z13, the ANSI Z136. And, of course, uh, for uh, historical reasons, we keep the CDRH standard in there. Uh, uh, but um, the, the, tr the transition between the two is very simple during the calculations. And we're going to be showing uh, that always, coming we up. Always, yeah, we, we always like to keep abreast of things, uh, keep uh, up to the very, very latest standards, um, and improve and evolve the program often to, to users' requests. There might be something missing that somebody might want to use and say, would you like to be able to do this? And if we feel it's a reasonable modification, we'll put it in. It's happened many times. Yes, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> it's a growing software. It, it absolutely is. Well, we will we will um, go ahead and uh, with this webinar, we will uh, cover how to do some basic calculations and uh, show you what to expect in one of our regular live uh, webinars where you'll actually be able to um, participate and ask questions live online of uh, myself or Jim. But I would like to just uh, say again uh, that Scientific Photonics is extremely excited to be representing Laser Safe PC here in America and uh, North America. And uh, we, um, we really appreciate Jim uh, doing these uh, informational training webinars. And uh, we'll also be working with Jim to start doing um, educational trainings and certification courses here in America as well. So you'd be able to get um, trained and certified on all the standards. Uh, and we we got to re, you know, face the reality that uh, lasers are being made in more places than just America. You know, 20, 30 years ago, yeah, America was kind of the standard bearer with some of the big companies that we all know and, and love. But um, nowadays, you know, there's lots of lasers being made in Asia, lots of 
lasers being made in Europe and Eastern Europe, uh, all around the world for that matter, and being compliant to all the standards um, is just more important than ever. And uh, so that's why we're bringing this to um, North America and to our clients. So thanks again, Jim. And I guess with that, we should uh, go ahead and um, get started with uh, showing how uh, to do, a. I guess, starting out with a basic search, kind of the, the ease and convenience of doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, initially, when you start up the software, you'll get a front, sc uh, front end screen, which you won't uh, see because I've already started the software. Uh, but the first thing that you will notice is this light green screen, which we call the assistant. And what assistant does is it helps you every single step of the way as you're carrying out calculations to tell you what it is that you're inputting and what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And assistant will also help you on the results when you get them. But a bit, uh, a bit more of that later. Um, here you can see what the basic input characteristics are. In other words, what you can calculate for. Uh, these are the active buttons where you select your calculator. Uh, you have point source or small source as they're often known as. This is for intra-beam viewing. In other words, you get the laser straight in the eye. Um, extended source, uh, same again intra-beam. Uh, fiber optic delivery sources, again uh, in the eye. Um, this one is LEDs. Now LEDs is interesting because that used to be in the old European standard that came out in 2001. But because LEDs are now a very uh, specific thing, uh, a new standard has been introduced for them. But we've kept it as a historical uh, thing just to be able to get a rough idea of how potentially dangerous an LED might be. And as you well know, LEDs are getting brighter and brighter every day and becoming a real hazard, not just a potential hazard. Uh, the next along we have uh, diffuse reflections. Uh, this is essentially when you fire a laser beam onto a, a surface, a wall, um, uh, whatever surface, and you're standing at a distance and you're trying to find out if there's a potential problem uh, looking at the spot on the wall and, or whatever other surface. And then we also have scanning lasers here. And as a help to those who want more in-depth information, uh, you have access to the AL and MPE tables, uh, which the standards uh, publish. Um, then we have uh, this product classification button, which I'm going to press now, actually, so you just get a very, very quick idea what this does. Kaboom. Notice assistant disappears because you don't need help here, because these are the help buttons. There you go. We press that, and that's a quick description of all the classes. Uh, notice I'm using EN60825. Uh, if I click on Z136, it immediately changes to cover the Z136 standards. And funnily enough, if I go to CDRH, there we go, we've got the CDRH um, classifications as well. Uh, being terribly European, well, for a bit longer anyway, um, uh, I'm going to go back to EN uh, 60825. Uh, you can click on any one of these buttons to get the specifics about the, uh, each one of the standards. Okay? Just a quickie on that one. Right. We're back no, to the that's, in, that's important because if somebody has uh, an older laser, maybe some older mm. equipment, you know, um, who knows, maybe a, um, I don't know, I don't want to throw out an example and, I, and alienate people. But just, let's just, just, an old, just an old laser that you just picked up from somewhere and it's got a classification yeah. of uh, CDRH type. Uh, it's nice to know just where you're at with it. Okay, anyway, uh, let's continue. The final bit here which is notes and general hazards and you can click on this and get a, a quick overview uh, of the, the hazards and how to interpret the results that you're getting. It's all in full glorious color. Then again, we like color. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why else would we so, be in photonics if we didn't like <laughs> the color spectrum? <laughs> so, let's do an actual calculation. We start out with a nice simple uh, small point source laser. Um, let's say, for the sake of argument, you're a holographer, you're dealing, uh, you're trying to make holograms, you're just trying to assess, uh, potentially, you've just got yourself a new laser, and it's a 25 milliwatt Heaney laser. So, um, I said a Heaney laser, for all you people now out there who remember and or use Heaney's, they're 633, or if you want to be really precise, 632.8 nanometers, there you go. A uh, quarter of a second exposure, which is typical eye response. Uh, now, 25 milliwatts. Uh, oops, now, what have we got here? Incidentally, I went racing along there, and uh, you probably noticed that the assistant changed as we moved along. Uh, that tells you 
uh, what the uh, what it is that you're dealing with, spectrum, etc., where your wavelengths lie, visible, invisible, etc., uh, time domains that you can put in, and here we've got the power domains. Now notice it mentions there that you'd have CW repetitively pulsed or single pulse. So if you actually start the calculation beforehand, you can select this little fly out and you can select repetitively pulsed or single pulse. And you, for uh, very specific purposes, you can ch select Gaussian or top hat. Um, as this is a Gaussian beam, we're going to go Gaussian. Why not? So we continue there. And believe it or not, the flyouts are available for other useful things because 25 watts, uh, 25 milliwatts is 0.025 of a watt. Um, do we really want to put that in there? No. We go to the flyout and put in milliwatts. Easy. Now, uh, beam again gives you how the measurements of the beams are brought out. We've got lots of things. Uh, just as another little aside, I'm going to go back to the screen here. Notice that little blip there. If you don't know what the magnitudes are, there we are. All the help is there. Notice this is a white screen. This is a help menu. Uh, the helps are white. Assistant is light green. Okay? We like color codes. So we go back to here. One millimeter beam diameter. Let's say 1.5, which is typical of uh, a particular oh, laser. Back. Okay, Jim. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Say again. Okay, I'll continue. I've lost you. Um, we put in one one and a half millimeters there. Um, again, it's a circular beam, so as a nice ah, little... There we go. Jim, yeah. can you hear me okay? Yeah, you yes, kind I of faded you out and faded in on the magnitude. I did? Ah, my apologies. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, I think you saw the screen uh, showing you that you can get the magnitudes. Uh, I'll uh, go back to the magnitude definitions again on here. Um, I did mention before that this is a help menu. You can see that here. It says help. Uh, help menus are white. There are help menus in there. Uh, this gives you everything you want to know about what dimensions you're using. Somebody says, I want a pico lay a pico what lays out. There we go. Whoops, that's a pico okay. watt. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we go back to where we were. Uh, incidentally, assistant is like a web browser. You we can lost, uh, uh, we lost you can your go, page altogether, Jim. Sorry? Your, your desktop is completely gone for some reason. I've lost the desktop? Uh, oh no, there it is. I'm sorry. It was on my side. <laughs> <laughs> Fair oh, this is the uh, this is this is the wonders of modern technology. We have to deal with this. We're yeah, two we're having some bandwidth here. issues. So uh, yeah. Anyways, okay. Proceed forward. Okay. Now, as I said, it's a circular beam, and as a nicety, um, instead of having to retype 1.5 milliwatts, you just hit enter on the blank field, and it will repeat the previous value. And the same will apply for the milliradians, which. Of course, given a flyout, you can select milliradians or degrees for your beam divergence. And whatever you put in that field, uh, if you put in the next field and hit enter, it will repeat that again. And laser to target distance, one millimeter, one meter. Okay? Now, you've got the option of either hitting enter at this point where you've reached the end of the fields, or you can hit the equals button. Either or, it doesn't matter. Plop, you have a result. And ho ho ho! Uh, yep, it's, it's red and it's dangerous. Um, this is the first box that comes up to give you a very quick alert as to what the nature of the situation is. And beneath, uh, beneath you can see the assistant is telling you what these various color codes mean. In other words, uh, five times the MPE, that's a real hazard. Between one and time, five times, um, it's potentially hazardous, but be careful. Uh, 0.5 and one times. Ah, um, oh, there we go. You're back. I'm back, okay. Yeah, you were gone you for about again. 30 seconds. Yeah, you were getting ready. You were, you were at the end of putting in the one meter for the laser to target this. Since then, you said you could either either hit enter or, and that's when you disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. you had to leave us hanging like that, huh? <laughs> uh, well, okay, fair enough. Um, as I say, the, the results are color-coded as to the level of hazard, and you can see that. Green means safe. Yellow is starting to get a little bit dodgy. Um, uh, orange, uh, really need to worry about it because it's a potential hazard. Red, well, you know, you're in trouble. Okay? Now, um, it tells you uh, that the five times, 25 times the MPE tells you that uh, to what level you're actually uh, in trouble, as it were. And, of course, down below in the assistant, you've got all the definitions that you need to know about. Uh, MPE, accessible emission, and uh, our own little term of MPE access which, uh, well, you can read up about it as the time comes. Um, 
as soon as you get to here, you can actually save the results. Um, I can save these here as uh, one of our specialized uh, 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 files. So it's our own special file, file format, which interestingly enough, uh, if you click on it from your desktop, uh, it'll immediately open up the calculator for you. Uh, it'll start up the software. Anyway, I won't bother saving this. Cancel that. Okay, now then. <coughs> Once you've got here, we can now go further into the details. Real this quickly, you've got a though, magnifying glass. Sorry. Real quickly, real quickly, though, what's nice about being able to save it is that if you have several different lasers and and several different um, labs or you know surgical rooms or whatever your situation is uh, where you're using the lasers, whether it's manufacturing or whether it's hospital, medical, whether it's uh, you know or university. Um, if you have multiple different lasers, uh, you can save each one, and then and once you have the basics down, you know the the, the wavelength, the um, you know like the beam diameter, this and that. Then you can just um, op reopen that saved um, search, and then if you have to change the um, say the meter distance from one meter to half a meter or to two meters, you can do that. You know, so if you move the laser to somewhere else or what have you, um, you don't have to spend the time re-entering all the date details you just open up that lasers uh, search Isn't that correct totally. in fact I'm actually going to save this right now <coughs> and okay. call this sci-fi uh, I save this calculation right now as we're dealing with it okay so I can pull in an existing calculation let's say for the sake of argument I got something called Gauss test which I was doing some stuff there right open the calculation boom immediately straight in there and you got the results no yeah. messing around so now right. I can return back. And if that was like, a, if you had to like, if that was something that you saved before and you had to change uh, a few little things, you don't have to re-enter all the data, just make a few little minor adjustments and boom, there you go. Okay, so I'm now yep. going to return back to our uh, previous calculation as you can see. Yep. Whoops, there it is. Nice there and easy. Is. Also notice that uh, this part here shows you the spectrum part of the laser that you're using. It's a tiny little nicety that we've included there. But as you can see, 632, anybody who knows that, is a red laser. If I put in a different wavelength, that would be a different color corresponding to the laser. Or it would show you that it's ultraviolet or um, um, uh, it'll it'd be the, uh, ultraviolet or infrared. Okay, sorry about that phone. Uh, right, now then, what can we do once we've got the results? Answer, we can go into details for the calculations. And we hit that, and there we have. Um, calculations tell you immediately there's a 3B laser if you're interested in the classification. Uh, for the more deep down calculations, you get all the results of uh, the MPE values, uh, beam irradiance, etc. Uh, NOHD, which is, a, which is a hazard distance. And OK, you've got all these terms there. And if you actually don't know what those terms mean, don't worry, assistant is there to help. Click on NOHD and kaboom, it tells you what it is. Oh, Extended beautiful. NOHD. So you actually have um, universities using this software as a training and educational tool for the students. Mm -hmm. and this is one of my amazing. favorite ones. I, I call mean, it I submarine. <laughs> 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 don't ask me why. Anyway, the, but a all friendly all submarine or never mind. All right. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> having said that, uh, whatever whatever you look at, there's always math available for you to look at and double check the results if you're particularly uh, interested as to how the results are derived. Because everything is completely transparent. Anything you want to know is there. Skin accessible emission. Again, notice heaps of math. Uh, what that means. These are table results. Uh, more mathematics. More mathematics. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on the extreme right hand side you will notice that you have um, safety eyewear and filters. Now this yeah. is an important page here, or important Absolutely. part of the page, for the simple reason that it tells you what safety spectacles you need to uh, be using in order to, uh, to make yourself safe. Absolutely. So in this particular case, you can see the specification for these is DLB4, which of yep. course, you know what the spectacles are, you know the wavelength, so you can approach Eric, who yes. interestingly enough represents uh, uh, companies that sell uh, laser safety spectacles, who, inter interestingly enough, the one that he does represent actually uses this software to specify their spectacles. And yes. again, if you want to know what that means, 
you can just click on that, and away you go. Tons of information there. Well, and here's the where all the stuff came from. On our website, Scientific Photonics, uh, we we have the um, spectacles uh, or sh laser shields uh, um, specified both if it, if it's been certified in the um, European standard and or the American, so it, it should list both if it's available. And uh, so um, right now we see the standards for the, the European, and I know Jim's probably going to show you a really cool trick here very shortly, so I don't want to... <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to put the cart yet. before the horse, but I'm just so excited <laughs> by it. Cause it's, I'm sorry, well, I just love that feature. <laughs> No problems. Anyway, the nice thing about this is, uh, or should I say, a uh, nice thing about Assistant is it will just track anywhere that you move the mouse to. So, if you want even more information as to the calculation, because you think, okay, fine, we've got so much, how much more can I find out about it? Answer, bam. Go to the details, and now you can get deep down information as to the numbers that are used internally to derive the calculations. Oh, we um, got you back. We got you back. I was just telling people the secret about how they can switch to the American standard and see if the safety eyewear they have is uh, compliant on the American standard or just the European or vice versa, just by flipping that little switch over there. Okay, well, you see that in a minute. Uh, also, as you swap screens, <clears> of course, the assistant changes, which sometimes can be a bit of a pain in the backside if you've got a whole heap of information on there. So now, how did you get this window open? Because we didn't, we didn't see or hear that. Just so uh, you know. I clicked there, click and it where? moved to that window. Click there, and the assistant moved to show what's relevant here. And how did you open now, that window, though? What did you click on to get that window open? Ah, okay, I shot that down. There's the information page, ah, in-depth okay. information. Click okay. on that, and away we can go, right? So I yep. just pull this down. And again, every single bit of information I need to have is there. And again, loads of mathematics. For those who love mathematics, oh, and if you that. want really heavy-duty du technical stuff, uh, there it is. All right. I <laughs> just can't get any better than that. Where's my coffee? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, if you're trying to work out uh, the classification of a device, um, you want to know, okay, it says 3B. Do I actually agree with that? Why should it say 3B? Okay, so here's the classification analysis. There you go. That's the reason why it reached that classification. And again, mm -hmm. believe it or not, I click on there, and there's all the stuff that you want to know about. Okay? Now, for the now, average said, um, laser, you know, technician or something that's, uh, you know, say at a surgery center or something like that, or maybe at some factory, they're probably not going to be so concerned about those sort of things. But that's the beauty of this software is it, it, if you're a research scientist and you know, you absolutely must know, you know, every detail about this because it, it could greatly affect your research, then it allows you to drill down as deep as you need to go or as you can possibly go um, or keep it as uh, simple as, okay, I need these pair of glasses and or this la laser safety shield and and um, I'm good to go, you know. And anyways, I just thought I'd throw that in there. That's fine. Uh, this is this is core level stuff. I mean, you're right down into the insides of the uh, of the standards because if you actually pick up a standard and read it, one of the reasons I wrote the software is I read this uh, I read the standard a long time ago, and I looked at all the numbers and I thought you have got to be kidding. This is just way <laughs> too complicated for the average Joe, let alone myself. So you, you've got to you've got to scrounge around through all over the place trying to find various values here. You've got correction values here. You've got conditions here. And at the end of the day, you're thinking, this is going to take me, this is going to take me the better side of half hour to an hour to uh, a long time. And even with a lot of experience, you've still got to hunt around quite a lot looking at it. Whereas this, bang, you've got the results. And then the moment you know where the results are, you can then find quite quickly um, uh, in the standard where you should be looking at to find the results if there's something you're not sure about or something that doesn't look right, which, if you're experienced, sometimes it does happen. So... Um, as I said, assistance sometimes can be a bit of a pain in the backside. You, you can, get, ah, you can oh, minimize you it. And there we, you go. We got you back. Um, we kind of lost you, you there back. a little bit. Yeah, we kind of lost okay. you there a little bit uh, for about 10, 15 seconds, just so you okay. know. I, you were talking about the, the in-depth standards, and then you kind of... Yeah, suddenly... exactly. When you when you get into the standards uh, themselves, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there. And it's sometimes very easy to overlook certain things as well. I mean... In the early days, we were overlooking tiny little subscripts. 
um, subsections there, which, uh, you know, were quite easy to miss. And over the years, we've learned how to tooth comb things finally to make sure that all the results presented are as accurate as, a, as are realistically possible. So there you have it. However, Eric was talking about nice little, a little, little nicety there. Notice all these results are in watts per square meter and such like. Um, well, if I now click on this little button and say, you actually want to see these as ANSI Z136, okay, bam, hit the button and everything changes. You've now got uh, watts or milliwatts per square centimeter, which is the CGI, uh, C, um, CGS standard that you use in the US of A. And um, all the numbers have changed to be in conformity with that standard. Um, normally, there aren't too many differences, but there are one or two values which are different. So if you do swap standards, sometimes there can be small changes. Um, the big change comes, of course, when you hit uh, CDRH, which, of course, it goes straight to CDRH. And, of course, there's the 3B that you all know and love and all the other <laughs> bits and pieces. Actually, the capital I, capital I, capital I, lowercase b. Yep, IIIB, that's Roman, Roman 3B, but that's, that's the old standard, okay? But it's still there, and people still use it, so you still want to know what it does, okay? Now, um, as I said, there's a little, uh, there are lots of little niceties built into this, because if you're really tooth combing the information... Ah, so oh, you got you back. You got you back. Uh, sorry? <laughs> you were just uh, talking about the uh, class uh, 3B, um, and that's when we lost you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm back again, am I? Yes, you are. Okay. For now. now if, you, if you really want to uh, cross-check the results with the standards, uh, you can check the values uh, with the ALMPE uh, calculator. So, open up this little window. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll stick it up here for the time being. Now, there's a little feature here that borrows the results from whatever pre the last previous calculation that you did. You hit that button, and it plugs in the results. And kaboom. Wow. You now have a new window. There you go. I'll just shove this out of the way up there. So now I've got a nice full screen for and every single value that you want to know about what the limits are for each part for each part of the uh, for each part, part of the classification tables or anything else. Everything is there, completely transparent. So we can go back to Z136 and kaboom, all the values change to give you the appropriate numbers. Easy. Nice. Well, easy peasy. Easy. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, I can lose this, this here. And let's say for the sake of argu argument, wanted to return to another uh, calculation that you had there. Um, I'll do this one, a 1 megahertz pulse uh, test. The reason I'm doing this is to show you that it doesn't just do continuous wave lasers. Kaboom. I'll hit that. See, open ah, the there we go. You're back. You were, just, you were just going to click on the edit button and tell us something, and then uh, we lost you. Uh, okay. So... Um, I'm opening up. Uh, Maybe you can back test. up just a moment for us, because I'm not sure how you got to the. You, we can see the window where you're saving something, but or opening okay. something, but I'll we're not sure how that. you got. Well, that wasn't the save window. That was actually the open window, open file, which you can select from either there or load. Uh, delete details. I don't think so. I should have said load. Sorry. Anyway, uh, you load on that, or you do there. Ah, open there we file. go. We got you back now. So you okay. just closed you can that open window, the file that's all there. we saw, and we couldn't see anything okay. else. You can open the file there by clicking on this open folder one, and uh -huh. kaboom, you can retrieve a previous calculation, which I'm now okay. going to pull in this calculation, which is a pulse test, so that you know that it doesn't just do CW. Click. Okay. Uh, oh, no, we do open. There we go. And there kaboom. We go. Now, the screen cleared itself completely. All the previous results, which are completely redundant, have gone, because obviously you don't need that. And notice now, 488 nanometers is a light blue screen. Yes. Okay. So you've hey, now uh, got a completely different set of results there. And we can go back to the details. It's a 10 milliwatt there. Uh, and again, it's a 3B and all the usual stuff. But this time, because we're dealing with pulses, uh, the standard dictates that we have to do three tests to work out which is the most, uh, which is, uh, the most hazardous, and that will be the result that you deal with. Okay. Ah. Okay. A quick aside, we are running uh, just past 30 minutes, so I know okay, I'm trying to keep this one a little bit limited. <clears throat> so I'll bring the assistant back by, re uh, by restoring him. Come on, assistant. There he is. He's back. <clears throat> um, that's basically what this whole thing is about. So um, 
uh, the next seminar we'll do, we'll probably go into, or not seminar, right. the next video that we'll do, we'll probably go into some of the other features, uh, extended sources, fiber optics, etc. Uh, or, of course, we can do this live uh, when we do the live, uh, the live seminars, where people can actually ask questions, they can pose their own situations. Uh, if somebody's got uh, a particular uh, thing they'd like to try out, Please put them in. We'll play around with it and show you why the results are what they are. Okay. Thanks for yeah, listening. And, and just um, um, go uh, go to our website, Scientific Photonics, and uh, you'll see the um, icon for the laser safety software. And if you click on that icon, there will be um, in the next page, there would be the um, uh, thing for the sa laser safety webinars. And that's where you can get the calendar for the webinars. You can also sign up for our newsletter and uh, be alerted as to when we're doing the next one. Uh, depending upon the uh, level of demand, we may do these once a month or maybe just once a quarter. Um, it just depends upon how many people show interest for the, the live ones. And then, of course, we'll be having some, uh, uh, <laughs> if you do need the laser safety uh, eyeglasses or shields, then just go ahead on our website. You can click on the uh, Noir Laser Shield uh, button there and I'll take you over to the glasses and um, if you don't see what you're looking for just email me or email us and I'll uh, uh, send in a request and we will uh, see about getting you the ones you need and um, with that Jim thank you so much for uh, spending your time uh, with us it's too bad we had a few issues with some bandwidth but uh, hopefully overall it will be um, a-okay these are the little problems we have with software. Many apologies to those viewing. Uh, uh, we got these technical glitches, but when you do it over a long distance, sometimes these things will happen. But there you go. Uh, well, we're here in California. You're there in London. and so, uh, uh, Exactly, <laughs> yes. And, of course, we're two completely different time zones as well. I'm in the afternoon. You're in the morning. But That's right. uh, whatever it is, it could have been midnight as far as you're concerned, but never mind. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Jim. We do appreciate it. And you thank have you, Eric. yourself uh, a great evening, and we'll talk to you later. And okay, we'll you take to... care. Thank you so much.